They say you can't buy happiness, but you can definitely buy tea. And that's pretty much the same thing. Greetings everyone, my name is Ranjit and in today's episode, I'll talk to you about tea. Apart from this uniquely mystifying taste that I hope to demystify in today's episode, tea is very good for your health and is even said to have secret weight loss abilities. Now remember this, people may often say choose green tea for this and white tea for that, but in fact, what they don't realize is that all teas pretty much have the same qualities. Why? Because they all come from the same plant, Camellia sinensis, thus have the same qualities. The three types of tea that you'll get out of this are Number 1. White tea. Now it's the baby leaf and the bud of the plant that is taken in for this. It's clean and dry. In China they prepare it in a wok, in Japan they use steam. Originally it was used by royalty in China. Second, Oolong tea. It is made from the matured leaves which are bluish green. Third, Black tea or red tea? Ye wo chai wala hai. Basically on oxidization of mature leaves, you get the blue-green oolong leaf, which after further oxidization becomes black. Now as most of you may already know, usually tea is made with little or no milk and mostly only has a water base, unlike chai, which people say doesn't count as tea and are absolutely right because it is in fact a magic potion. So preparation. We should remember that tea bags aren't so bad but aren't necessarily the best way of consuming tea. In fact, they are very convenient, but may not be as healthy or as flavoured as they should be. Which is why, believe it or not, you have to use at least two to three tea bags per cup to get the best flavour. Also, try looking for a USDA certified organic tea, because they are more authentic. If you are making loose leaf tea, more than good. Let the leaves stick only to the bottom of the vessel. Simply prepare a vessel by throwing in some hot water in the pot. Allow the leaves to open up as much as they can. Add hot water again. If you wish to decaffeinate your tea, you can even pour out the first batch of water and pour in a new one on the same leaves. Coming to additives. Now here are a few things you can add to your tea for flavour. Number 1. Milk. Now remember, unlike in chai, regular milk has only small quantities of milk in proportion to the water. Matlab, मेरे पापा तो बोलते हैं कि उनको मजा करना नहीं आता। But in fact, internationally, tea is indeed used as a health drink, and it's been proven that dairy milk destroys the antioxidants that count for the health factor. Therefore, even a little can prove counterproductive. That is what I told my dad, and then he gave me a patiala glass of dude and said, calcium is healthier than antioxidants. As a suggestion, however, if you would like to have health as well as taste, go ahead. Add soy milk, great substitute. Number 2. Lemon. Add lemon to the tea, great for flavour. But remember, put it after the tea is made and not before. Number 3. Artificial sweeteners. Don't do it. They are addictive and make you gain weight instead of losing it. You would rather use sugar instead. If you want to use a sweetener that's healthier, try honey or look for agave nectar. It's just like honey but it's vegan. On how to choose the best tea. Remember, that tea is seasonal. So if you go to a tea vendor, ask him for the freshest available leaves. Try to spot a consistency in the size, shape and the colour of the tea that you purchase. This is where the tea bags lose. Because they are of mixed quality. So some may be too good and some may be too bad. This is what may contribute to the relative flat flavour. So try not to pick dry leaves. They have lesser flavour. Try to see if you can get a distinct aroma from the produce. So you know for sure that it will have a great taste and aftertaste. So freshness, consistency and flavour. That is what makes tea the most widely produced drink in the world. After water of course. Yes that, even more than milk. Tasting tea or cupping tea as tea industry professionals call it focuses on the appearance of the leaf, the aroma both before and after steeping, the colour of the resulting infusion or liquor and the tea's taste or flavour. Like wine, differences in taste can be attributed to location, climate and how the tea is processed. Leaf. Examining the leaf is telling. Is it twisted, rolled or a natural flat leaf? These and whether it's broken or whole will affect the taste and body. Aroma. Smell the leaves before steeping. Do they smell grassy, smoky or sweet? Once infused, inhale the aroma deeply and enjoy the bouquet. Does the smell appeal to you and wet your taste buds for sipping? Is it citrusy, flowery, toasty or fruity? 
See, a tea's nose can reveal not only quality, but subtle flavors that the mouth might overlook. Liquor. This is not type of liquor. Nahi hai. The color of infused tea or liquor can vary in color. Look at the consistency of its color and the appearance of the liquid in a white cup. Depth of the color will denote proper brewing time. Taste. After slightly cooling, slurp your tea to make sure the full flavor spreads out all over your tongue. Does the tea make a strong impression? Is it smooth? Does the flavor leave a lasting and memorable finish or dissipate after swallowing? Note elements of its flavor traits. Is it malty or vegetal? High quality tea exhibits briskness. Okay, that was all for tea. Now I'm going to leave you with some fun facts. Did you know that Camellia senin says the tea plant can produce for 50 years? Tea helps in the prevention of heart disease, cancer and regulates cholesterol. Nearly 3 billion cups of tea is consumed daily worldwide. This video was brought to you by Grashoba and One Network. This is Ranjit signing off. Time for a chai break.